another episode of Alberta Boys TV. We're gonna go check out a startup company that's two years old, that's up to 300 employees currently, and we're gonna see all sorts of awesome things here in the province of Alberta. Iceman was a really cool ride. When Patricia first contacted me, they were looking for somebody to take their truck and make it not only something unique and different, but fix it up because she was a 2009 that, that had some rust, had some things we needed to get rid of, uh, but we also wanted something unique, something custom. It was awesome to get to know Patricia and her family throughout the process. <laughs> yeah, me too. Sounds good. No, oh, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at Pretty that. fancy. <laughs> Woohoo! Awesome. Oh Where my is God. your truck? Oh my God, it's my truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you guys, this looks amazing. It's it turned good. out really, oh, really good. Oh, look, Josie you got your sticker. <laughs> She's like, can we ask for a sticker? Now the truck is finished. We've got some bulletproof running boards, five-star auto accessory kickbacks, bushwhacker flares, e-auto trans grill, Called up the guys down at Toyo Tires. They hooked us up with some Mito Ridge Grapplers. My man Steve down at MHT got us some fuel vapor rims with a double dark tint. Oh my God, that's amazing. You'll, really you'll nice. see it nighttime, there's no question about that. Wow. I'm so glad we got the rims. We were so happy we could get those rims as we got one of the last sets in Canada and the truck just looked fantastic. You know, as usual, Called up my man Robert from Evolution Motorsports and uh, we got some cool looking headlights in this thing. Retrofitted some projectors in there. Projectors have a, a setback switch back so that way around the corner you got a white halo, you're turning your blinker on, you got an amber flasher around there. Just those little touches that just make it that much better. somebody that seems as excited about what they do as I am and that was Patricia she gave me the opportunity to come check out their business I was excited uh, it's a company that two years ago had nine employees and to date 300 plus and I really was interested to see how scaling up that fast was done the right way uh, and you're about to see because it's been done the right way Well, Patricia, so excited to see your place of work. You know, we talked about it a bit, and now we get to see it. So tell me a little bit about how you became involved with Falk. Well, I've worked for Mogan's for the past 25 years, and I am not the longest employee by any stretch. There's lots of people here that have worked in all of his previous companies. Mm. So when we left our previous one, it was just natural that I would... Come follow him yeah. here. So you came here from the get-go when it started? Right from day one when we incorporated the new numbered company that became Falk Built. We didn't know what we were going to be, we just knew we were doing it again. So you were one of the first six to nine people that were sitting here. <laughs> yeah. So you've seen some drastic change in the past couple of years. Yes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Like what, what have you seen? What, what has it been like to be involved in such a fast-paced growing company? Well, in our previous world, my background is business, so in our previous world, it was my opportunity to get involved in a startup, and I had always wanted to do that. When I joined his first company, Smith International, uh, it was well established, so it was that chance. So the chance to do it again, to have a second shot at a startup, a brand new venture, not knowing what we were going to do, just knowing we were going to do something incredible in construction again, I just jumped at the opportunity. 
our way of constructing, really, this is my third business, and uh, on our way of constructing is going to be the way of the future. Uh, construction for years, you know, has been challenged with efficiency, rising costs, lower quality, mm -hmm. uh, let alone any kind of a sustainable solution. Uh, today, because of technology, you know, the things are going to change. The way we communicate, we know we happen to be sitting here physically, which is a rarity, especially with a pandemic. But in our business, we're doing work all over the world. And the ability to sit in one room and communicate, it just isn't there anymore. And, and it's not even just enough to have a Zoom meeting. We actually have to communicate what is it that we're going to build? You know, how's it going to look? You know, what sizes are things going to be? And, and technology that's out there today allows us to do that. It really is what we call digitizing the conventional construction industry, and that's what we're doing. Hmm. What we have here, though, uh, is you know almost 50 years of experience in construction and manufacturing. Uh, but the most important thing, we have a team of people here yeah. that have been in this industry for a long darn time, and uh, you know that's the driving force for the business is the people that we have here in the culture. The only thing you have in your life is your relationships your experience and your reputation mm -hmm. and that includes most importantly with the people that we're working with then of course our customers yes. and the marketplace and what we're doing there so uh, uh, our experience is the one thing is, is that no matter uh, what you say it's the most important thing in life and um, it's really what's make growing the business for us is doing things in a completely different way and recognizing the mistakes we made in the past mm -hmm. you know this time we'll make whole new mistakes. Yep. Uh, and, 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 and understanding the business itself is extremely important. So we're sitting six in 2019. Uh, how many people do you think roughly you employ to date? Just a little under 300 all over the world. Ah, uh, see, and that's, that's beautiful to see that even during a time that honestly jobs are needed, you're, you're creating that space. Well, cool. we came from Cal uh, Denmark in 1952. Mm. And uh, we've continually squandered the opportunity. You know, we've been spoiled by our riches and the great things that the energy uh, business has done for Alberta and for us, quite frankly. But And we've had the chance to at least move away from being reliant on energy, but we haven't taken that opportunity. And now, you know, we're desperate to device, diversify our economy, but there's been lots of companies like ours you know, on our predecessors that have been able to diversify and have been very successful and there's better, no better place than Alberta to do it. I really get a sense of togetherness coming in here. So what does culture mean to Falk Built and what is it that you're trying to kind of base your culture off? That's an excellent question and it is a huge part of our business and it always has been. It started with Mogens. So there's a term um, that's Danish called huga, which is all about warmth and comfort and inclusion and, and having meals and candles and all the things that people understand. We've always had huga. Ever since I started with Mogens, everyone is welcome. So we invite our families, our pets, guests, everyone. There's always another seat at the table. That is just our culture. So often people come here and they say, oh, this feels like home. Yeah. It's like, well, we're really proud of that. But we're also this time really focusing on the fact that we are one big family. <laughs> Nothing is more important than the environment that we create for our people, for our teams. So you'll notice the entire thing is painted. We did that. Um, so the, the Echo Dome and the nest that's out there, they're beautiful structures. Mm -hmm. Part of it is because we want the idea of inclusion. No us and them, we're all together. We're all Falkers. They're, like I said before, we're flat that way. Um, but it's also to create the best possible environment for all of us, because we spend a lot of time here together. Uh, my father was a cabinet maker from Denmark. So we've been in the construction and the manufacturing business right from day one. We came to Calgary in 1952. One thing he taught us is, that you know, no matter how dumb you are, sooner or later you get it right. Is it's okay to fall down, just get right back up. And by the way, that's I would say that's something that defines Albertans is that we don't quit. Oh, I agree with you 100 percent. I think that we're going to be uh, the type of construction you're going to see in the future, and the manufacturing you see in the future. Mm. We're going to definitely take advantage of our experience, our relationships, 
and technology, but what will define our success, and I mean this sincerely, is our ability to maintain the culture and the motivation of our people. And we had the opportunity to do something different. Uh, we wanted something custom made. And so that's how I met Bryce. Hi, my name is Bryce Lewis. I own a shop called Last Resort Fabrication. We just opened up shop here in Red Deer in central Alberta. And this is uh, one of our first big projects that we took on as a new shop. I've been doing this for 25 years now, but this is a, a new venture for me going out on my own. The difference a custom box makes. People would look at that and go, why would you spend more money on a custom box compared to just slapping in something that's been pre-manufactured for a couple hundred bucks? Uh, the volume difference. You know, the, the owners will attest to this. We had a bit break right before uh, they came to pick up the box and the bit went flying through the box and smashed up the box. So when the clients came to pick up the truck, we had to throw just a generic subwoofer box in there. So that way they could go along, they could still use their truck for what they need to use it for. Uh, and so we made another box, we had them come next week. We threw in another box and we're talking like double the decibel volume because Bryce knows what he's doing. It's been exciting since Bryce has been here. You know, he came and he saw, he looked, him and his wife decided that they were going to build a business together as well. So now we're working alongside Last Resort Fab and it's been awesome to see from the person that came to me looking to a job to the person that now hires people, it's encouraging. This province is just so entrepreneurial that it's hard to not catch the bug. It was neat to see when we walked into her place how different our businesses were, but how much similarities we had between different things. Well, now here we're walking up to your, what looks like a display area. Yeah, this is called Falkville. So these are examples that we use to share with our clients of all the different types of pods that we can create for them. This is neat. So what is it, I, what is it I, I'm looking at here really? Like we see we got, Something different for the roof? And yes, that's called a barisol ceiling. So everything that you see here, we manufactured, but the barisol ceiling we source for people, but it allows for that customization again. That, so what is the super stud? The super stud is the foundation of our solid wall. It is a split stud application. So this gives you a perfect example of how we have this passageway for all of our plumbing and electrical. We can do pre-manufactured electrical that already come attached to our digital horizontals like this, or they can source that on site, whatever they need. So you guys, I'm guessing that you've manufactured even like all these brackets and everything that's Everything. Forward. And so literally they, they set the first super stud, all the rest clip into line with this. Everything is marked with labels. It goes up super fast, super efficient, and then the cladding can come on later, which is excellent because that allows all the trades and everybody put the ceiling in all the different things that need to happen. You can integrate the technology. Yeah, they can work on a skeleton, and yes. then the last piece is to go on really completely. Cladding goes it. on last. The other advantage is if you see over in the healthcare pod here, on the back side of this healthcare pod here, the amount that needs to go in as far as all the med gases, the plumbing, and the advantage again is not only is the space available, but then you have infinite flexibility to take the panels off and gain access so they can constantly be updating the technology. So this is where the nurse's desk would be. Again, a beautiful environment, why we need to elevate for healthcare settings. And then you get to see the front side of what all that med gas looks like. You guys really are set up and ready for whatever comes your way. Like Yeah, retail, whatever you need. Now we don't just make pods, the pods are just examples. We do solid walls, glass walls, and all kinds of commercial. So what is it we're seeing over here? So each of our pods is named after the branch partners that have supported us the most from the beginning. And so this is an example of the school. It's obviously fully functional. So we use it for onboarding of our new staff or any of our meetings, but then it also um, allows for showcasing some of our options as far as our doors. I tell you what, beautiful structures. Like to see all the lines and the roof and everything. So when we developed the whole layout, we had everyone's involvement. 
so that we could make it as efficient. Product moves the least amount of space around and then comes right to shipping. So this is only 90,000 square feet and yet we can produce about 250 million out of this facility. So we have a roll formers for the super studs and the digital horizontals. So again, the sustainability of that is that we're not just buying preset lengths and cutting them, we're actually going to be able to roll and cut the exact lengths that we need, so all, virtually no waste. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I mean, the amount that you guys are producing, you know, the least waste as possible, that can also be transferred to the client and be more cost effective. And Absolutely. Well, and we need less trucks too, because you can see the whole stack of super studs down there. We can put more onto each individual truck. Um, so it certainly speeds that process up and just less shipping altogether. Well, because I know one of, one of the big things that you guys talk about is how you have extremely cleanable surfaces. We do. And that is uh, partly the, the actual fault skin itself and then also that it completely seals the substrate. And you can use all commercial cleaners, which makes this perfectly um, suited to the healthcare environment, but that, we do it for everybody. It's all the same. We have the most diverse workforce that oh, I've ever, ever seen, but it is so much part of our culture. Well, as I'm walking through here, I see woodworkers, I see metal workers, I see people working on machines, I see <laughs> just about everything you could think of. Yeah, absolutely. about what we're doing here because this is the future of construction. We cannot continue to build the way we've been building for the last hundred years. It needs to evolve, it needs to change, it needs to be more environmental, it needs to be more flexible. That's what everybody wants and needs and this is our response to that. Right here in Calgary. Well, yeah, isn't that <laughs> awesome? Right here in the province of Alberta. Well, I am so pleased that you took the time out of your day to talk to us and show us what we have here. So thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Brad. We sure have appreciated working with you as well. I don't know if anybody out there has an encourager. The person that you have by your side that lifts you up, that brings you forwards, that goes, hey, that idea, good idea. That's my brother-in-law, Daniel. My name is Daniel Martin. I'm one of the original founding members with Brad Tattard in our business, Alberta Boys Custom. We've been incorporated since 2016. If it wasn't for him, honestly, I don't know if I would have pushed this company forwards. Uh, he was standing right behind me the whole time saying, yeah, man, great idea. Do that, move forwards, I love that, let's see it. And because of him, honestly, he is the reason that I, I took forwards with such confidence. Find people around you, find people to support you. That's the team that we have. We all stand behind each other and we go, I'm behind you, that's a great idea, let's do that. And that's how Alberta Boys was formed. So my role in the business is a lot more on the manage, managing side, backroom stuff, so I'll have Brad with a lot of the Accounting, a lot of the organizing, the long-term planning, you know, making sure employees are on point. Obviously, Brad gets very carried away with all his big ideas and it's really hard to keep everything on track. So, you know, we really work on scheduling, calendar, making sure our office is clean, always looking for new employees, new expansion, what we can do, what we shouldn't do. The first time I met Brad was about 12 years ago. I was lucky enough to marry his sister and start an amazing family. And so I married into the name Rempel. Um, I'm originally from Quebec, put it out there, straight up French. Yeah, it was awesome when I met Dan. I won't forget when he first came in. Uh, one of the first times I met him was at my house and this is just some dude dating my sister. And so you're kind of like, yeah, yeah I don't know. Like, what's this guy about? And it was a short amount of time that we realized we were gonna be best friends. You know, we have more than a business or family relationship and we became great friends in the beginning from riding bikes to going snowboarding. And that does make a very good business relationship for us. When we can't always touch base, we always know the other one has the best interest and heart, and that really allows us to grow without fearing of the other. Often they say friendship and business don't go together, but when I tell you that this was a friendship made for business, that's what this is. Uh, it has been fantastic. Where I lack, Daniel has. 
and where some places Daniel doesn't have and he lacks, I make up. So together, we become much better than what we could ever be apart. You know, some of the main thing we focus with our company, Going Places Couriers, we deliver lots of parts that go to body shop, bumpers, car parts, tires, and that really tied in with Alberta Boys Custom. When we started the company, we were already on a friendly basis with a lot of our suppliers that we can use for tires, for parts, and now we've also expanded to offer full flat deck service. We do lots of job site deliveries. We also do special vehicle delivery, so with Alberta Boys Custom, lots of our custom builds, when we go to car shows, when we go to custom shops, we always make sure everything is towed properly and we don't put any wear and tear on those brand new vehicles. Yeah, so as we're replacing these uh, front and back cab supports, we realized that uh, the rear cab support had been previously done and whoever threw her back in there, none of the spot welds were back in, so she was just sitting there. Thankfully, uh, we didn't see this thing flying off the road, flying off the frame, and we're very happy to see how we're coming together. Uh, we've cut back down till uh, doors are hitting some half decent metal. Really, when it comes to something this year, if a guy wants to, you can take and you can replace absolutely everything. Uh, but we found a point where we're gonna be happy with what we have so that way she's gonna last for years. Now we're taking, we're cutting down those cab frame supports and we're gonna slide them in the old ones so that way we can weld them in. And we have now taken taper down our upper rocker uh, and we're gonna take and get that inner welded on there. Justice has her cleaned up beautifully. We're just ready to start getting this welded in uh, and we're gonna see this thing come back together. I am excited to see what's happening. much for joining us. Check back next week for another episode of ABTV. Cancer and reproductive harm. Hmm. Good to know.